Adrian Porter talked to Mr Karma about his sweeping election victory. Would you have preferred a bigger opposition? I think it's healthy to, to have a, a, an opposition which is effective because it keeps the, keeps the government on, on its toes. I would, like, I would like to have had it, although I'm not going to do anything at all to create it. <laughs> do you feel there's any danger, perhaps, of uh, Bechuanland becoming a, a one-party state as a result of this overwhelming victory of yours? Well, we'll never have a one-party state by, by act of government, but uh, simply by uh, the, what the, the, the electorate itself chooses. But we are not going to sort of make, pass laws to make ourselves into a one-party state. Do you think that Bechuanland can exist as a viable country, an independent country? Well, at present it can't. I think we will we'll, we'll need a lot of assistance, particularly from the United Kingdom and from other uh, more friendly disposed uh, countries, and by our own efforts, particularly by uh, uh, extensive and uh, prospecting for, for minerals and, and, and so on and uh, the improvement of the cattle industry and as well as agriculture. When you say well disposed countries, would you take aid from the Eastern Bloc as well as, well as from the West? The devil you know is better than the devil you don't know. <laughs> Do you feel <coughs> any antagonism towards Britain as a result of your exile in 1915? There was a stage when I was uh, half, uh, rather resentful of my exile, but uh, I, I, I put the blame on the British government of the time rather than on the British people. And uh, because I know that they've always supported me uh, and, and have and, and deplored the action of the British government. And I, I see no reason why, because of perhaps of that treatment at that time, I should jeopardize the interests of my country simply because of personal resentment, which anyhow I have, a, I, I no longer... What he has now is a happy family life. The Karma's two elder children are away at school, but not the twins aged seven. Their mother spoke about her life as black Africa's only white first lady. Are you active in political life as such in Bechuanland? Do you take a great interest in politi politics? No, no interest at all. <laughs> Where do your interests lie? Um, I like doing social welfare work. I've done quite a lot of that in Surrey. But they seem pretty well organised here. Quite a lot of people, they don't need any much more help, I think. Mm. How do you find life in Africa for a woman in your position? What difficulties do you have? What uh, easiness does, do you have? I suppose that, well, with a family, the worst thing is having to send children away to boarding school at such a young age. So you say goodbye to them, you see them then only three times a year, from the age of about nine or ten. You feel Africa is your home now? Um, I wouldn't like to go back to Britain to live, because I, I was always thoroughly miserable in the cold weather. I much prefer a hot climate to a cold one. Also, the pace is very much slower here. You don't realise it until you get right into the heart of London. Start trying to keep up. If you had to pass over again the years of trouble and exile, would you change anything at all? That's awfully difficult to say. I don't, I don't think there, um, apart from it, I suppose if one had known fully the consequences, which we didn't know, quite what we would have done. And do you feel any antagonism towards Britain over what happened? No, it's all too long ago now. None at all. In the new Gaborones, European children play happily on a native roof. Their parents and other whites have been assured that there's a place for them still in Bechuana land. The land where Seretsi Kama plans to build a multiracial independent state. It is the intention of uh, at least my government to, to, to influence neighboring states and other states uh, and to show that uh, black and white people uh, can live together quite harmoniously and, and, and uh, work for the interest of their, of their country. How far would this uh, peaceful coexistence with South Africa take you? Would, would you, for instance, ban political refugees coming into Betuan land from South Africa? No, we, 
You see, what uh, is considered uh, a, a, a crime in South Africa, from a political point of view, is not necessarily a crime in this country. And uh, genuine political refugees have our sympathy.